verse 15. I like this. So when they had finished breakfast, I love that Jesus loves breakfast. You know what I mean? Good to see you, Kenny. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me? Let me ask everyone in this room. Everybody look at me in my beautiful blue eyes right now. Everybody, can you see my eyes? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Yes? So my question for you is he says, do you love me? What is God's love language? I want you to, do you have my slide? Go to my, go to my message slide. And here's, here's the thing is there is, in, in normal relationships, there's five love languages, okay? Get out your phone. I'm going to go over these really fast. I'm sure you know the five love languages if you went to any seminar ever in your life. They've touched about the five love languages, and, and everyone giggles and laughs about each, each person's different love language. And they're like, oh, that's not me. Oh, that's definitely you, right? Everybody loves to talk about figuring out their love language. And, and as a human, you have these five love languages, and one is what? Physical touch. That's, it might not be number one on the list uh, for the book. For me, that was number one, right? Because as a man, as maybe an alpha man, and sometimes you don't want to be emotionally connected. You don't want to be spiritual. You want to operate on that surface level. That surface level very easily is accomplished when it's just physical touch, right? So, so number one for me is physical touch. Number two, quality time. Number three, gifts. How many likes? Well, we can go back to quality time for a second. How many knows that some people, you actually have to spend time with them in order for, the, for them to actually feel loved, feel admired, feel appreciated? It's, it's all about time. Time, 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 right? And, and it's not just time. It's also quality time, which means look in my eyes, right? Like, are you hearing me right now? <laughs> well, the Niners game's on. It's kind of hard to hear you. Um, <laughs> So so are you actually, is it quality time or is this just like, right? Okay, so quality time, physical touch. And physical touch, by the way, can be kissing, hugging, intercourse. It can be, it can literally be, I don't know about you, but I love to be massaged or tickled. Uh, and not tickled like, no. I mean like, I mean that soft. You know that soft, like, ah, uh, right? That's physical touch, right? Physical touch doesn't all have to be intercourse, all right? Or, and doesn't always have to be sexual, right? It, physical touch doesn't always have to be intimate. It can just be, okay, so physical touch is a love language. Quality time, love language. Third, this isn't even part of my message. I'm just making sure that you understand what your love language is. Third is gifts. How many loves Christmas? I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. And I used to love Christmas because of the gifts, to be really honest. I would love to come to that packed out tree and wonder how big the gift was being given to me. Like I was literally selfish. All I could think about is the quality that somebody better have hooked me up with in order for me to be happy this Christmas. And the quality gifts, not even gifts, it's quality gifts. Matter of fact, you can ask my kids, if they buy me an a gift that I don't think is, like, like they bought me this ugly, ugly green corduroy jet. I'm so glad they're not here right now. And like, and this ugly, um, this ugly like mustard creamy beige, like, and 
Like these, to me, they're they're so ugly. They're the wrong material. I never wear these. They think, Dad, those are so sick. I'm like, they are sick. They are sick. Um, gifts, I love gifts. At the same time, some people, it doesn't matter. It's the thought that counts. I'm not, it's a thought that counts guy, right? Like, I would rather you just think about it. Tell me, I thought about buying a gift. Great, thank you for not doing it. Because I would sit in my closet, never wore it, never, right? Um, but some people are just, man, I'm so appreciative of the gift. And they'll keep it, they'll cherish it. They love gifts, right? You know that's you if you're in the room right now. Words of affirmation. Some people are words of affirmation. I find myself going, I'm all of these things <laughs> in some way. You know, like you, you you can make my day just by being like, man, I love that, whatever, right? And And so words of affirmation. Sometimes is all someone needs. They don't need the gift. They don't need the physical touch. They don't need the quality time. They just need words of affirmation. You're doing great, right? Then the the big kicker, acts of service. <laughs> oh, my gosh. These are the needy people. So these are the very, very needy people. I need you to, if, if you love me, you would have made my bed. If you love me, you would have closed the door. If you loved me, you would have cleaned off the mirror, cleaned the pee off the toilet seat. If you loved me, right, you would have, you would have when you got yourself a cup of coffee, you would have got me a cup of coffee, right? So I am so anointed right now, right? I'm speaking all the things. Well, I, really? Acts of service? So, oh, the way I put it. So physical touch, quality time, gifts, words of affirmation, acts of service. Guess what? These are all the ways that God loves us. For people that need physical touch, oftentimes they're Pentecostal. <laughs> they're not Baptists. You will, Listen, if I say physical touch, all the Baptist people are like, nope, don't touch me. Don't lay a hand on me. Don't, uh, nope, uh, hold hands. Nope, don't want to hold hands. Pray for the person next to you. Don't want to pray for the person next to you. I am not a physical touch. I do not want to be physical touch, right? Like, you're not going to, every Pentecostal is a physical touch person. Oh, God, touch me, <laughs> right? Like, oh, God, let them lay hands on me. Physical touch, right? Oh, God, let me shout out, 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 right? They're, all, they're going at it, speaking in tongues, doing all the stuff. Physical, there's your Pentecostals. <laughs> Right? They love physical touch. And guess what? God loves to physically touch his people. For people who love to be physically touched. For people who don't love to be physically touched, guess what? God doesn't physically touch them. Wow. He loves Baptists. Yes, he does. He, oh, he lo I'm not saying that they're never physically touched. But you get what I'm saying, right? God loves. So hold on. Quality time. Guess what? God loves spending time with you. But not just time, because God didn't spend all day long with Adam and Eve in the garden. He did not want to spend all day long with them. They picked the cool quality. Cool, man. He's picked the cool of the evening to hang out with Adam. He didn't spend morning, afternoon, and night with Adam. He picked a quality time. With Adam, every day. Three gifts. Oh, Jesus got, Jesus was born into the world, and three wise guys, right? No, I'm just joking. It was a whole bunch of, it was a whole bunch of people, and they brought what? How many knows these guys knew how to move the comma? They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This was expensive stuff. This was like they brought a Bentley for their offering. They're like those. The Bentley's in the offering bucket today. The, the deed of trust of my palace is in the bucket today. They didn't bring some like, oh, here's a little scrape off, Jesus. I'll give you a tip like I give the waitress. They came and they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You want to give a great offering message? Preach about how non-Christians give to God. That's the story of the, of the wise guys, how non-Christians give to God. They give everything. Cool. Yes, 
Number, number, number four, words of affirmation. Does God affirm you? This is why we have the gift of prophecy. Why do you have the gift of prophecy? So that I can prophesy over you, and it encourages you, it, it exhorts you, and it al- aligns you to the Father's heart. So the reason why we have a prophetic culture is for what? Words of affirmation. How many knows when you get a word from God, doesn't that do something for you? Like when the Lord not only gives, speaks to your, the mystery of your future, but also affirms your past or confirms what he's doing in you or on you or through you. The words of affirmation. And then how many times does God do acts of service for you? How many times does God make your car that should have ran out of gas 60 miles ago extend you for another 10 miles because your stupid rear forgot to get gas and you refused to get it at the last place that was charging 10 cents more? And you're just going to believe God and maybe run out of gas and have to have an expensive AAA, right? But God, in his acts of service, opens doors for you, promotes you, blesses you, expands you. God does acts of serve. God shows you love the way you want to be shown love. And maybe you've never even thought about it. Because unfortunately, God will never force himself on you. He's not like a weird husband or a, or a weird wife. He'll never force himself on you. He loves you and he waits till you say, I want your love. I want to be loved by you. He's not immature that he respects your pouting. He's not immature that he respects your pouting, meaning, I don't love you right now, God. So I don't want anything. God's like, fine, I won't touch you. I won't spend quality time. If you're going to pout in the corner, you can pout in the corner all day long. When you're ready to be mature, and put your, seek first the kingdom of heaven, I'll release my love all over you. But when we, when we pull ourselves away from God, what does the Bible say? Draw nigh unto God. Draw what? Close. Everyone's like, what's the word nigh mean? Draw close to God, and what, what happens? God draws close to you. The principle is draw close to God and God It's not pull away from God for God to pull into you. Do you get it? We're going to really go somewhere today. Okay. So these are all the ways that God loves you. Now, when I'm going to say how do you love God, it is not about performance. You don't have to love God. But, when you, but if you're going to love God, God has a way that he wants to be loved. Let me ask you a question. If you were a person that wanted t- quality time and all, and all someone wanted from you was physical touch, would that ever fill your love tank? No. Guess what? None of these are God's love language. These are your love languages. These are your love la- God gives us the secret of his love language. Let's go to it. John chapter 21. How many knows that Jesus is perfect theology? Jesus is perfect theology, and Jesus tells us exactly what his love language is. He says this. He goes, so when they were finished having breakfast, he said, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Here, can, can I tell you something? This is going to offend you because you think God wants to spend time with you for his love. He does not want to spend time for his love. He spends time with you for your love. Time is not his love language. Touch is not his love language. Oh, I'm, oh. These are my love la- Could you imagine having a spouse that had no love languages like you? No love language is like you. Guess what? You have a God who has a love language that's not on the list. Do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said to him, what? Tend 
Where's where are we at? Ten. My lambs. Go 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 to my go to the definitions. The word ten literally means feed. By definition, the word tend literally just means feed. Hold on. If you love God, how do you fill his love language? By being someone who feeds. Hold on. No, if I love God, then I need to worship him. No, you don't worship him for him to get anything out of that. That's for you to get something out of it. The Bible says that that he inhabits what? The praises of his people. He comes inside your praise for you. The praise of God that you give is literally for the gratification. How many knows that the Bible says, put on the garment of praise? Thank you. Somebody reads their Bible. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So who's the praise for? I'm worshiping and praising God because I need the inhabitation of his presence. I'm, do you understand that? As I worship God, he inhabits me. As I worship God, he removes the spirit of heaviness. As I worship God, there's things that are happening for me as I worship God. Are you getting this? But how do I love him back? And Jesus says this, if you love me back, you'll feed. Who does he say you'll feed? My sheep. Now, what's a sheep? A sheep is not immature. It's a fully grown part of the flock. Who does he say to feed first? No. Go go to it. What does it say? Ten land. Hold on. Where are we at? Okay, thank you. Yes, Lord. He said to him, Tend my lambs. Thank you. That's my bad. He said, Tend to my lambs. And then second, he said, Son of John, do you love me? He said, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said, Then shepherd my sheep. Now, shepherd is completely different. We're going we're gonna to get there in a second, but I'm going to go back to lambs. When he says feed lambs or tend to lambs, how many knows that we have a whole bunch of people that have no foundation for Christian faith? How old are you guys? 23. How often did you go to Sunday school? Never. How old are you? How often did you go to Sunday school? A few, hardly a, Sunday school? But you went to Sunday school. See the fall off? You went to Sunday school. You're 48. You barely went. You didn't go at all. Has nothing to do with who you are. Nothing to do with who you are. It's how old you are. And our values have shifted. And we're raising the next generation without a foundation. We expect them to come in and understand how to worship God when they don't even know who God is. They have no foundation that he is a God of lineage. That he is love. That he is alpha, omega, beginning. and 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 they, They have no value. The way that you have value, even though you only did it to this age, you have a foundation that he does not have. And you have a foundation that he does not have. It's not saying that you're better or he's worse. It's saying that it's the case. And we have a whole bunch of people that are coming into church, and they don't understand why someone like me is all excited and talking about God. They don't get it. Like, we were pastor's kids. We get it at a very intimate level. But the problem is we have nobody that understands that that we have to teach the a, B, C's of Christian faith. Why do I spend so much time on love? Because love should be the A of the Christian faith. Who God is, God is love. Is that easy to understand? But not every way that you're loved is God. 
And there's false loves out there that's not God. So, so when I say love is God, someone who's been sexually abused might go, well, if love is God, then I'm out. Because they were loved inappropriately. Are you hearing me? Well, if love is God and, 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 and how I understand love is abusive and manipulative and all the ways I get love, then if that is God, then I'm out. We have to understand that that's not God, that what is God? Perfect love. God is perfect love that casts out fear. God is a God that brings healing. God's a God that brings deliverance. God, well, what, what is healing? What do I need healing from? How about all your past? What do I need deliverance from? How about all your past? What do you need deliverance from? Maybe addictions? Maybe hurts? Maybe habits? What do you need deliverance from? Maybe way, ways of thinking? Right? False imaginations about yourself? And if you need deliverance from that, anytime you take something away, what do you need to do? Thank you. If you leave something empty, you got to put something back. So if you take a demon out, you need to put the Holy Spirit in. You put the Spirit in, you take the Spirit out. Like, we really need to do the hokey pokey of Christian values for a second, right? And turn yourself around. Like, we need, we need to do the Christian hokey pokey because no one gets it. It really is. You should write, you should write the hokey pokey book of deliverance. You take the spirit out. You put the spirit in, right? <laughs> then you turn yourself around. Repentance. This is all there in the hokey pokey. We, we were singing it the whole time. <laughs> Listen. Are you getting this? The reason why Jesus said, if you love me, I don't need you to touch me. I don't need you to spend time with me. Oh, I know this is completely nothing that you've ever heard ever in church. Nothing. I don't need you to praise me. I don't need you to spend time with me. I don't need you to give me compliments. I don't need you to bring me gifts. I don't need any of those things from you. What do I need? If you love me, go feed. Lambs. Because if you don't save the young, we will not have the old. Come on, if you don't save the young, how on fire are you that Caitlin's had the experience that she's had in the two years that we've been together? Amazing, right? And I don't mean this to put you on the spot or, or just to make this centristic about me or this house, but I don't know that she would have had the same experience had we not had a connection. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that if I don't just, listen, listen to me, Sing Ling comes as a guest of a friend of mine, and she comes with her daughter, and I could have easily focused on the mature one. But as the young one that can't pay me tithe, can I just be real? isn't going to network me into anything, doesn't have any attributes for me. Now, the mature one, I could really go after that one, right? But Caitlin comes walking out of the church, and the Lord gives me a word, and I don't put that on the shelf and not do anything with it. I literally say, hey, Caitlin, and I just speak into her, and I give her a prophetic word right then and there. Now, Honestly, in my thought, in my mind, she could be like, dude, I don't know you. You're crazy. And, and some of those thoughts even came. But it also wrecked her. Because I gave a young person for no, for no, like, there was no benefit to me. But just straight love. Straight that my love for God, when he gives me a word, I'm going to feed lambs. And a matter of fact, every time you're around a lamb, if you really love God, you're going to pull out your bag and give them something to eat. Can I tell you my favorite people in church? My favorite people in church is the ones that had a snack in their purse. (laughs) Right? Right? When I came to church, 
And I'm like standing and worshiping Jesus, hallelujah. And, and some old lady's like, would you like some graham crackers? I'm like, hell yeah. And like, you're right, I'm grabbing graham crackers, loving Jesus. Like, I love this. All of a sudden, this lady's my favorite person. You know why? She fed a lamb. Like, yeah, wow. Right, we're, 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 we're worshiping Jesus. And you got graham crackers? You got, you got the little red cinnamon gum? Oh, my God. Red cinnamon gum at church was like, victory in Jesus. Right? Like, it was the best. Like, red cinnamon gum, graham crackers. Uh, yeah, I never liked goldfish. You're too young. Anyways, I, I, I never had goldfish. We had old school stuff. Like, like we cut cheese. <laughs> like there was no cheese in it. You cut cheese and you, you hand a bag of government cheese. And by the way, it's where In-N-Out Burger got their cheese. If you don't know anything about government cheese, that is the cheese In-N-Out Burger sells. Um, it is. It was amazing having someone in the church that brought a snack. They became like grandma. They became aunt. I remember every time I'd go to church, I'd run up to the person. Not everybody. I'd run up to the person that had food in their purse. I was a little fat kid. I just wanted food. <laughs> Listen, we should come with a bag to feed lambs, people that don't know God. And by the way, don't dive into your theology bag and your doctrinal bag and all. Teach the basics. Teach them what perfect love looks like. Teach them Jesus. If there's no one in your life that you're teaching Jesus, you're not loving God. You're loving yourself. I'm here to worship you, Lord. That's for you. I'm paying my tithe. Guess what? That's also for you. I'm attending. Guess who that's for? Got the answer? Look at that. You haven't even went to Sunday school your whole life, but you get it. Oh, my gosh, he's brilliant. It's for you. You're not attending for me. You're not attending for God. You attend for you. You're learning something today you never had before. Right? That is not you loving God. That is you loving you. So how do I show that I love God? Bring a bag. You give a graham cracker of love to put it in someone's mouth, give them a little juice or some water. How did Jesus go to the woman at the, at the well? He said, if you knew who I was, you would have asked me for a drink because I have brought living water. I brought living water to the well. You look like a little bee. And little lambs need little f- drink and little foods. <laughs> you know why? Because she had a real problem. She hooked up with five other dudes, were married, and then she was living with a dude. And she had a sex problem and a whole bunch of problems. And guess what? Jesus was a single man, not have a, didn't have a wife, and met with a woman with a sex problem alone. But Jesus was, did not have a sex problem himself. Because if Jesus would have had a sex problem himself, he wouldn't have met with that woman. He had what she needed, not what she wanted. Some of you have what people want, but you don't have what they need. And some of you, if you knew what you had, would know that have what they need. You have Jesus, and you're trying to give them something else. You have Jesus. You can feed people. You just choose not to. By the way, I'm trying to, by the way, I'm 45 years old. God just revealed this to me this year, that his love language was feeding people. 
I'm 45, bro, and I have not known that this was my God's love language. He's my dad, and I thought worshiping him was his love language. I thought giving my offering was his love. I didn't understand that those were all for me. I didn't realize that feeding the lambs was the first level. You know how that is, bro? It is being a father to the fatherless. It is not by pulling out a Bible. Man, I, I, I want to go to the next point, but the Holy Spirit's not letting me. He's like, you got to show them how to feed the lambs. And can I tell you something? That when I go to Starbucks, when I go to the gym, when listen, I go to the gym. I'm wearing lime green shorts. I'm wearing my, my black Nike shirt and, and probably a pair of Nike Air Forces like this. Or I go to pickleball. And there's 80 to 100 people. There's 80 to 100 people at the gym. There's, there's all these people at the coffee shop. And guess what? They all think I'm their coach or their dad or their big brother. Listen, they walk up to me, hey, Pete, I don't know these people. Right? But guess what they know about me? I'm a safe place. And I tell them what to do. Hey, can you go get me this? Yeah, I'll, I'll go get that. Why? Does, do you work for him? No, I don't work for him. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm just doing what he asked me to do. You know why? Because I am a father, and I love my sons and daughters, even when they're not mine. Because I'm a father, so everywhere I go, I feed. I, you know what I do? I just go, okay, thanks, bub. Thanks for bringing me that drink. Dude, you're so, you're so cool. Yeah, BC? Why? Why? Because he needs words of affirmation, so I'm feeding him words of affirmation. Hey, bro, how you doing? He might need physical touch, right? So that handshake was the love that he needed. What am I doing? I'm feeding. I'm physical touching. I'm, I'm giving quality time. I'm giving words of affirmation. That's what the lambs need. They need the love of God. And all of them have a God love language. It's physical touch. It's quality time. It's, it, we have the five love languages. This is what the lambs need. It's in your bag. You got to give them the, well, well, hold on. What about Jesus? Well, you're going to get to Jesus, but before you get to Jesus, you get to love. They get to trust you. They build a relationship with you. They know you're a safe place. They know that you are a quality person. They know that you're not a child molester. It's kind of a big deal. Right? They see you have a quality car and that you have a quality career and that you have a quality Friend circle group, you they, they 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 see things about you that says, I want to spend more time with you. I want I want you to pour into me. I don't have a dad or a mom who pours into me this way. I don't have an elder brother or an elder sister who pours into me. I need this is what it looks like to tend lambs. Are you catching this? Five love languages. It's not about pulling out your scary Jesus is coming back. One World Order, the Illuminati. Like, no one wants to hear your flat earth theory. <laughs> shut up. Literally, shut up. Love on people. Love them where they're at. Encourage them. Endorse them. Bless them. Buy them something. Put your money where your mouth is. Sometimes they want a quality gift. It's called a coffee, right? You buy them that coffee. Hey, that's on me. Why would you buy my coffee? Because I want to buy you coffee. Thanks, bro. All of a sudden, every time you walk in, they're like, hi, hi. Why? Because you bought them one stupid cup of coffee. Cost you five bucks. When's the last time you thought about that? Like, I should buy someone in the room coffee that I don't know. Because I'm going to feed lambs. And by the way, Jesus said, when you've done it to what? Least of them. You've done it to me. This is, this is God's love language. When you do it to the least of them, 
That means when you hook up the person in your apartment complex or your housing community or on your block, you hook them up and they don't deserve it because they're the least deserving one. When you've done it to the least, you've done it to Jesus. That's love for God. God's like, oh, my God, that felt so good. Like you're loving God. That's you loving God. God's going, oh, my God, you're loving me. Oh, my me, you're loving me. Oh, my me. Right? When you are loving and feeding people that don't know Jesus, when you are love, listen, that usually means people that are blind, people that are deaf. I'm not talking about physically blind, even though you should probably hook up someone that's physically blind. You never know. You could become Stevie Wonder or something. Anyways, like they are spiritually blind. They're spiritually deaf. They're, they're probably the meanest person in the room. Guess what they need? Jesus. I know this is a really complicated message today. You're like, wow, it's really deep stuff, bro. That's none of your business. It's just like when I paid my tithe this morning. I paid my offering. Well, what if what if I am movement doesn't do this or that or doesn't I gave it to God? I didn't give it to a church, I didn't give it to a man, I don't give it to a denomination. I just gave my offering this morning to God. Right? So if you're doing it as unto God, I hate to bring up this song, but what if God was one of us? <laughs> right? It's a terrible song. It's actually a horrible song. But but it, it the thought is this. What if God was one of us? Just a thug like one of us. Right? Would you have would you have helped a thug out if that was Jesus? And the Bible talks about ministering to angels unaware. That sometimes there are people in your midst that came from heaven and are sitting there, and it's almost like, let's see if Let's see if you are attentive in the room. Or if this person doesn't have the look or the, right? Okay. So he said to him again a second time, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my, what? Sheep. All right. Let's, let's look at the notes real quick. Ready? I'm almost done, guys. But this is really good. The word shepherd means this. Do you have it? Shepherd, to rule or to govern? To rule or govern. Guess what? Mature people need order. Mature people need accountability. When you're spiritually mature, you should be here. You should be faithful. You should be a pillar. Are you, are you understanding? If you're spiritually mature, you do not have the ability to be like, oh, I'm just a little seat, right? For instance, you've never been to Sunday school. You don't have the foundation that I have, right? I have a greater level of accountability to God than you do right now. Now, as you become more mature, you're going to have a greater level of accountability. God's going to expect you to do some things. But until you have learned and been brought up and, and right, There's not the same level of accountability on you as there is on me. Right now, you just need to stay alive, (laughs) right? Could you imagine having, like, I have a granddaughter who's nine months old. You know what her job is? Stay alive. Like, get big enough. And and then uh, now she's crawling. Soon she'll be walking. That's, That's her level of accountability right now. Crawl. Eat. Breathe. That's a lamb. But once you go from lamb status to sheep status, if you're, like, crawling on the floor to me, I'm going to be like, Dave, get up. That's awkward, right? Now, a sheep, you're going to show up to work. You're going to have hours. You're going to have responsibilities. Sheep or the shepherd is to rule or to govern of rulers to furnish pasture for food to nourish, to cherish one's body, to serve the body, to supply, help me with this word. Thank you. The requisites for the soul's need 
or what's required of the soul. So, for instance, when I'm in this room right now, I'm furnishing food for mature people. I'm giving you something that maybe you haven't given yourself in the sense of a message, right? I am shepherding sheep. I'm shepherding mature ones, that, and I'm giving you something that you could go, oh, this is a good reminder. I need to, what, feed lambs. This is a good reminder of how I love my God back for all the love he loves me with. How many want to love our God back? I mean, I don't want to be just self-centered and, like, I just want to receive the love from God. I just want to, okay, God's God's showing us how we love him back. One, we feed lambs. Two, we provide food for mature people, which means greater levels of accountability, greater structure, greater levels of nourishment to cherish one's body. Wow, what are we talking about? One body. Could you imagine if you cherish the body of Christ? The coming together, the being one, being in unity, to cherish one's body, to serve the body. That means not only does the arm get some bicep pulls, but then we put the, right, and get some squats in there, give, give the legs, the glutes, some training. Get, get the feet going, get the hands going, get the whole body going to supply the requirements for what's the soul, mind, will, and emotions. Mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. There's things that your mind needs to be changed in. There needs to be a transformation of the mind, a transformation of your spirit, a transformation of your emotions, a transformation of your will. Your will might have been to do this, Now we're talking about things, and you're like, you know what? I need to change what I do on a daily basis. My will needs to change, right? So I'm giving you requirements of your will. I'm changing that it's not okay for your emotions to be, like, it's not okay to be pouty. It's not okay to be self-centered. It's not okay to always be upset. It's not okay to be offended. Why? Because you're not a little lamb. Little lamb, I go, <laughs> run away. But you're a sheep. You're a mature one. You don't have the right to be offended. You don't have the right to be emotionally checked out. Because guess what? If you're emotionally checked out, you know what's so funny? I called, I called Kate this morning, and I said, I'm not going to be up there on time. Madison was sick this morning. Our, our household had sickness all through it, and I was trying to pack bags. I have to be at the airport today, here soon. I'm leaving for a week for Vegas. I'm going to be late to church today. You know what I knew? I knew I could call, and it would be handled. I could walk in late, but guess what? Guess what could eat? This is what happens. <laughs> this is totally what happens. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, oh Lord. What PC, you're going to be late? Oh, I got to do it myself? Thank you, Kate. <laughs> I got to do worship myself. I got to. <sighs> right beforehand. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, now I got to do it myself. If you're not going to be here, I'm not going to be here. If you're checked out, I'm checked out. Hold on. If you're mature, 
you don't get the right to be checked out. Had Kate checked out this morning, you wouldn't have had a worship service. Hold on. Yeah, but how is it if I check out? I don't know. But you're a part of the body, and when you check out, you're not here, and we're missing something vital. When you're checked out, when I'm checked out, when someone's checked out, we're missing something that we need to go to the next level. All right, here we go. Last thing. Go back to the scripture. By the way, there's another scripture in John chapter 15 that says, if you what? Love me, you'll keep my commandments. What? So is, is his commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. That, what is Jesus' commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And love others as you love yourself. How else do we love God outside of loving, loving sheep and loving lambs? Loving ourselves, why we love others. Because if we don't receive, but you got to love God first. If you don't love God first, you can't love yourself. Hold on. Before I could truly love myself then, I got to love lambs and sheep. Because in order to love God with all my heart, how do I love God? By tending to lambs and bringing structure to sheep. Then I can start loving me. So them before me? Yes. Because if you start putting the love of God before the love of you, you're going to find that your love with God is complete. I mean, want a complete love. All right, here we go. Then he said to him again, this second, uh, this, we already got there, verse 17. He said to them a third time, now, here we go. How many times did Peter betray Jesus? So, for every betrayal, there was a question of, do you love me? For every time Peter betrayed Jesus, now there's a question. What is Jesus doing? He's trying to reconcile a failure to a faither. I just made up a word. He's trying to reconcile you failed here? Let me reconcile this. I want to heal you here. Do you love me? Betrayal one time. Oh, you know I love you. And here's the question. If you look this up in the Greek, if you look this up in the Greek, Jesus says the word, do you love me? And it's the word in, in Greek, it's the word um, agape or agapo actually. It's agapo, and, and Peter answers him in the word filio. In the Greek, he says, do you agape me? And Peter goes, I filio you. And he says it again, do you agape me? And then the second time, Peter says again, I filio you. And then the third time, Jesus says, do you filio me? And the third time, Peter says, I filio you. What is the difference between the agape and the aphelio? Agape is the community of coming back together. What is filio? It is the intimacy of already being one. Did you hear me? Agape is the community. If we agape each other, it's a community. Every time, every time Jesus goes, do you even love me like, like you love everybody? Do you agape me? And Peter's answer is like, I don't just agape you, bro. I feel you. Do you feel you me? I feel you, baby. 
Jesus says, do you agape, do you love me like the community? Do you love me like you love the disciples? Do you love me like you love everybody else? And Peter's like, I don't, I don't agape you, Jesus. I feel you. I'm intimately in love with you. Jesus asked him a second time, do you agape me, Peter? And Peter's like, I feel you, Jesus. And a third time, now Jesus says, do you intimately, filio, do you, do you love me? And then Peter says, and look at this. He said the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you filio me? And Peter was grieved because he had said a third time, do you love me? Meaning it clicked in him. It clicked. You know I betrayed you three times. You know you gave me a prophetic word that I would betray you. And I betrayed you three times. <sighs> and you're asking me now with intimacy. You're exposing me. Me and you, and you're exposing me. Can I tell you something? For the past few weeks, the Lord has been exposing you to yourself, not publicly. The Lord has been dealing with your heart. The Lord gave me a prophetic insight. He's like every individual in here, God has been saying, when are you going to grow? When are you, go- when are you going to stop worry about how you didn't do it right in the past? When are you going to break off the excuses? When, when are you going to live? You know what you're called for, and you keep fighting it. So I'm hearing prophetically in the spirit. And I'm telling you this intimately in this room, that the Lord is speaking to each one going, when are you going to stop fighting who you've called to be and stop letting go of it every single week? The Lord has been dealing once and twice and now three times. He says, and Peter, do you love me? And he goes, he goes, and he said to him, you know all things. You know that I love you. He said, it's not enough for you to tell me and for me to know it. It's not enough that I know that you listen. This is the point. It's not enough that God knows that you love him. It's not enough. Jesus is perfect theology. This is not Chris Martin doctrine. This is Jesus saying, it's not enough that you that I know that you love me, Josh. It's not enough. God is saying to you today, God is saying to me today, it's not enough that he knows that you love him. Because God does know that you love him. He knows that you love him. But it's not enough. Well, then what more? And here's what's hard, is to not get into performance. Because, well, now if I love God, then I have to do something. No, no, you don't. You don't have to. You get to. And if you have to, then you shouldn't. That's when it's performance. When if you think that by, get this, God is still going to give you your five love languages, whether you do your part or not. Did you hear that? God is still going to give you your words of affirmation. He's still going to give you your physical touch. He's still going to give you your quality time. He's still going to give you your, uh, what else? I don't know. Gifts, acts of services, Dave, or singling. God's going to still do, he's still going to manifest his love even if you don't manifest your love. And God is saying, but I only get love a way. If you love me, you keep my commandments. If you love me, you tend to my lambs and you feed my sheep. It's not enough that you know that you love me and I know that you love me. It's That's not enough. You have to tend. The word tend is feed sheep. How do you feed sheep? Not the same way you feed lambs.
Do you know how to feed a, a baby? It's off the boob. Do you know what you need when you're a baby? You need a boob. You know what you need to offer babies in the kingdom? Close to your chest. A boob. Closeness. Do you know how to feed a sheep? You put hay out there, and you let the sheep go get the hay and eat it and chew it and digest it themselves. You lead them to a pasture where they go, and they, you don't sit there and hand them. You don't do that with sheep. Peter knew this. Peter knew that this wasn't about the old way or the new. Peter understood what the difference between baby sheep and, and mature sheep was. He got it. Are you catching this? In order for us to feed the sheep, in order for us to feed the sheep, it's different level. Which means on Wednesday nights, like when we're talking about deep stuff, you're going to that deep place for yourself. No one should have to get you to, well, it's really good this week. It's really good. You should do it because we're really excited. Like if that's what gets you to churches, we're really excited. We're happy to get here. Da 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 da. da. We got the we got the drums. We got the band. Our youth group. We're like doing the running man. Like come on. Like everything's fired up, right? Church, church, come on, church. It's a big act because you have still little man. I want boobs. I want. To be close to the chest and nimble off the teat. Mm -mm. At some point, you got to come off a teat, not close to the chest, and be responsible to eat from what God provides you for yourself. Hold on, does that mean then we don't have to hang out no more? No. We hang out as a flock, we gaze the same. Grass. Graze. Thank you. We graze the same grass. <laughs> Alex is like it's an ant. It's gaze and graze. Oh, my gosh. Are you catching this this morning? So how do you love God? Sometimes, and I'm going to tell you something. It's Jesus that leaves the 99 and goes after the one, not you. If you are being God to people, that is wrong. You have a God complex. And if you think that you're supposed to go after the one for the 99, that is not your job. That is Jesus' job. Jesus will go after the one. Jesus will go after the one. You are a shepherd to sheep, mature ones. Let, let yourself be amongst sheep that know how to gaze the field. Take responsibility for the sheep and know that Jesus is good enough to go after the one. Jesus is the shepherd. And if you start becoming the shepherd for Jesus, guess what? People are going to have their salvation and their spirituality, and it's going to take all your time and all your efforts, and it's never going to be enough. I've had family members for generations do it. Family members for generations thinking they were doing God's work and they were doing, they were literally spending time away from their wife, kids, husbands, spending all their time doing, chasing after people. And they justify it by, I'm going after the one. Then you don't trust Holy Spirit. And you're building a bad culture. That you're the only one that can save them. If you're constantly feeding lambs and you're constantly feeding sheep and you're constantly holding sheep accountable, you don't have to worry about the one. God will bring the one back. He'll put them on his shoulders and he will bring them 
back. Or they will figure it out. Very different, huh? Very, very different from fundamental, how do you love God? Oh, we love God by our worship. That's not how you love God. How do you love God? We love God by our offerings. That's not how you love God. How do you love God? We love God by our faithfulness and attendance. That's not how you love God. All those are how you love who? That's right. That's how you love yourself. How do you love God? By being the one who loves others. And identifying the difference between lambs and sheep. Lambs are going to need to be next to the breast, going to be close to your heart. That, that weaning process has to happen. before. And by the way, everyone wants to start with a weaning process. It starts with an attachment process, actually. Do you understand that? You have to, there has to be a season of attachment and closeness. And once there's a season of attachment and closeness, then there becomes a season of what? Weaning. Some people have never felt their level, though, of attachment and closeness. And that's why this becomes very offensive. So you're going to have to become attached and close to a spiritual father, spiritual mother, and get close for a season. Only know that 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 season is supposed to come to an end. Where you become a shepherd to sheep. Jesus said, I will make you what? Fishers of men. What is Jesus' ultimate goal in your life? Is to expand you, to multiply you, to subdue the earth. There is no way to subdue the earth if everybody stays at the level that they're at. There's, we could, like, we could have a thousand people come to this church, right? And a thousand people put butts in chairs and they all cheer for my good message and they all stay on their jobs and make no change in society. And guess what we have? A thousand people that are a bunch of sheep. Really probably lambs. That never got enough chest time. Never got properly weaned. And never got properly launched. That's the problem. So what do we do? We take responsibility of the problem. We say that's the problem. How do we overcome the problem? We got we to gotta first start by loving God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, and start loving each other like we love ourselves. Weird. It's like the core, basic first message. Bring my graphic back up. It's like the core, basic message, but we have went our whole lives never identifying God's love language. All right, stand with me. We're done. 